Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. Don't shut down, let's keep talking. How many times have you had something happen to you or you've been going through something really, really stressful or something which has just really knocked you for con in your confidence or perhaps it's devastated you and perhaps you just don't want to talk? I get it, I've been there. But the one thing from being in the lowest place of my life ever after losing somebody very, very dear to me, the one thing which kept me going is to keep talking. And if you can't talk at that moment in time, don't leave it too long before you choose to speak to somebody. Whether that be your parents, perhaps you're a little bit older and your parents are a little bit older and perhaps you don't want to burden them or feel like you're burdening them. And that's what I want to mention as well. It is never, ever a burden to anybody who you choose to talk to. It will always actually make that person feel very, very privileged that you've actually, of all the people you could speak to, you've chosen them. Now, for me, my go to people who I talk to is my mum and my dad. And it was my nan. But it was my nan I lost on the 31st of May 2021. It sent my life spiralling to a place where I never imagined. I never imagined that this person would not be in my life anymore. I've known heartbreak in my life. I've known problems. I've known difficulties. I've known health issues. But the one thing, and it doesn't always work, but most of the time I take a moment. And even if I don't want to speak in that moment, I don't take too long before I then go and speak with somebody. Now, if you're like me and with such a busy family and everything going on with brothers and nieces and nephews and, and grandparents and, of course, everything which went on with my dear nan, and perhaps you don't want to open up and talk to somebody in the family, find somebody who you can, whether that be a friend, whether that be somebody who you've known your whole life, or whether it be somebody who you've met at an event, or, and I say an event, such as, for example, if you recently started doing an activity, or if you recently started going to the gym, and perhaps if somebody asks you, are you okay? Perhaps don't always be so quick to just jump and say, yeah, I'm fine. Because to be quite honest with you, sometimes finding somebody outside of your social remit or your family can often be the most empowering. And even though we love our family dearly, some strange reason we seem to listen to somebody more who is outside of that circle of what everything is going on in our life. For me, and I'll be quite honest with you, the person who I speak to and and open up to everything, about everything rather, is the, uh, I came in touch with this person when I lost my nan, um, and as I was organising my nan's funeral with my mum and my and my uncle, um, I was, I'm just trying to think how it worked actually, I was put in touch with the reverend of who would be uh, conducting my nan's service, and I gave my nan's eulogy, and I had a uh, I had a huge part throughout um, the service, and um, I done lots and lots, and it's a privilege to be able to have done that last thing for my nan. And actually, it was the reverend who actually after the service offered, and he could tell that it, it was really knocking me for six, and he actually said, if you'd like to talk, Bradley, I'm always here. And you know what? We've just passed the year mark of losing my nan, which has been very, very difficult. And it's difficult daily. It really is. But I choose to wear a smile. I choose to keep pushing on because that's what she would want. And you know what? The person who I talk to about problems and stresses and things in just in general life is the reverend who took my nan's service. And you know what? In a way, the last time I was with my nan was in that, it was in that room, in that chapel and he was there. So in a way, it's almost like that last connection I have with my nan, talking to him. And I talk about all things. I talk about grief. I talk about how I'm feeling without my nan. I'm feeling down. I'm feeling sad. All these sort of things I talk about. Laugh, cry, all of those emotions. They're healthy to open up and express emotions. But of course, it all starts with talking. Talking is the key to opening up our mind. It's the key to opening up of what's really going on inside somebody's mind. Now, so often we hear on the news or in social media or all over the internet about young men not talking and not opening up about what's really going on inside. It's so easy, isn't it, when somebody asks us, how are you, to jump straight to that point, I'm fine, thank you. I do that when I'm not quite ready to talk and I always go, I'm fine, thank you, yourself? And I quickly spin it back around onto them because I know in certain situations, and particularly when I'm going through low points with my without my nan by my side, 
what I do is I quickly spin it back around onto them because if I keep it on to me for too long, the smile crumbles down, everything starts to flow. Not always a bad thing, let me just remind you. It's not. To let all of it out, it's healthy to express emotion. Do you know what? Talking about talking and being able to keep that communication, I know it's so easy to shut down in the moment. When something bad happens in life, our automatic response is either sometimes we go off, sometimes people can go off the rail and they can do all sorts of bizarre things and all sorts of things, which of course is not great. But people do what they do to get through that moment in time. It doesn't mean that you can justify anything bad happening. Of course not. But sometimes we have to air a thought of what they've gone through as well. The other end of the spectrum, when something bad happens, somebody just shuts down. The other end, or the opposite end of the spectrum again, is somebody fakes what they're going through and they fake that they're fine. Um, I don't mean fake what they're going through. I mean fake that they're fine. They put that, they shut down and they just wear that kind of look that actually it's almost like they haven't heard or they've not been there or they've not, or they've not accepted the situation. Of course, acceptance is a whole nother avenue. But what I'm saying, don't shut down. If you're not ready to talk, don't wait too long. From someone who's gone and had their life completely turned upside down, I'm blessed in this life with the parents I have. My mum, my dad, have they've got me through. Quite simply, they've got me through. Without them, in the darkest of times, we have awful thoughts. I always say in the darkest of times, there is light. Now, I do not mean for any at all that there was any light then, because there wasn't. But in weeks and months after, you tend to see a little glimmer of light. For me, it's almost like that my nan is still teaching me, even though she's not here. She's up above and she's looking down on me. It's almost like, and it is, that she is still teaching me. She's still guiding me. My nan always said, growing up and as I was getting older um, into uh, into mid teenage years, my nan always said, "I may never I look." I think the world of me, this is what she used to say, I think the world of you, my love, and although I may never see you grow up, I'll always be with you and I'll always be looking down on you. So I always remember that. And then when I talk with the Reverend, it almost kind of affirms that. And it almost, it, it well, it does. It brings it all together and it's there. So I know she's still teaching me. I know that guidance is there. But of course, we have to talk. In that example, then, I'm talking to the Reverend. I'm talking to my mum. I'm talking to my dad. I've got brothers, but if you're anything like me with brothers, I like to keep almost a stern character. Yeah, it's fun. It's having a laugh and a joke, but I never really open up in emotions. I never really talk. I take kind of almost like the natural role of sorting out everybody and making sure they're okay and helping and guiding and in sort of supporting and helping one thing or another, which I love that natural role. I absolutely do. But sometimes we all need that helping hand. So never ever shut down. Keep talking. Let's keep talking. We all have our good days and we certainly all have our bad days. And like I say, if you're not ready to talk right now, that's fine. Don't shut down though. Let's keep talking. Take a moment. And if you feel as though you have got nobody to talk to, there is, there's somebody, usually that person is right in front of you. And you know what, even if you've got to do a search and there are talking groups and things probably in your local community, literally do something simple by doing a Google search and you will find so much. Never, ever, ever feel down or second guess your thoughts because immediately you don't know who to talk to. There are so many charities out there. There are so many people out there who want to help and listen. But do you know what? Before you get there, there is probably somebody not that far away from you, whether it be family or a friend, who would want to help you if they truly knew how you were feeling. The power of talking can do so much. Don't shut down. Let's keep talking. Thank you so much for sharing this with me. It really does mean a lot to share something so close and so dear to my heart. I wish you the greatest, best wishes through whatever you're going through. My love and support, even though you may never ever meet me, 
It's right here and it's for you. Take great care. Know that somebody out there is thinking of you and hoping that you pull strength and you get through what you're going through. Take great care. I'll be seeing you real soon. Bye for now.